Today on Very That, we talk about sitting what? under the dock of the bay. Oh, uh, we talk about Kesha. <laughs> and Mirabella magazine. I don't think that's real. It used to be real. Yeah, and we also, we just talk about, like, you know what, making the best of wherever the fuck you're at, no matter mm-hmm. what city, where you're at, just fucking live in the dream, you know? Sometimes and you also just... straight dudes. We talk about straight dudes. Oh, yeah. Straight dudes and the San Antonio stroll. Fuck. Hey, are you straight? <laughs> Ew. Forever. <laughs> I'm Delta. Hi, I'm Raja. And welcome to Very That. <laughs> welcome to Very That. I feel like there's already a mood happening between us. Like <laughs> we we really literally we literally have been on the Zoom call for like under 10 minutes and already we're like Meh. Yeah, like I I was telling you I like I I I woke up like with a headache and I know I feel like maybe I just haven't had enough water or something. I don't I don't know. I just I feel like and I also feel like I'm kind of on a sick one because, like, just this, you know, I think there's just been. We'll you have Omicron. Mm-hmm. You have Omicron. No, I don't have that. I just, I don't, I don't have, like, I don't feel ill, per se. I guess just things, you know, when things just bug, like, you have plans to do oh, something yeah. and then you're like, come yeah. on, come on. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's all and it's all loosely. Ba- ba- they're kind of loose plans, like mm-hmm. you know you're supposed to do them, but they're like not not they're not uh, you know set in stone in any way. But you just go fuck Omicron. I'm just I'm over this. Come on. Well, no more I mean, Omicron. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember uh, a long time ago when I was telling you about um, Delta Lake, like all that situation where the lady was sending the email? Uh-huh. Well, then this different one. Here's the thing, like. I'm always I'm always down to do like a project or film something or when there's a check involved like don't think I'm not going to pay attention to these gigs when they come up cuz I got to filter mm-hmm. them myself and they're mm-hmm. few and far between but please don't fuck with me and please don't play with me and please don't think I'm on your schedule cuz quite honestly you're on my schedule <laughs> and I'm going to do what the fuck I want when I want and why I want and that's why I'm a loose cannon and that's why you probably won't see me a lot of places because the second the tiniest burr gets near my ass cheek I fucking fly. And this lady mm-hmm. had to send me a thing and was like, oh, I have opportunity for you and blah, 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 blah. And I thought, oh, this sounds like a perfect fit. And I had to message her back. And I was like, thank you for the consideration. This sounds like a wonderful fit. I'd love to know how I could move forward with this. I will wait for your response. So it's been like three mm-hmm. days. And I thought, you know, what? it's been three days. Maybe it fell to her spam folder. So maybe I should just send her like a little nudge and say, hey, hope your weekend was great. <laughs> Uh, wanted to circle back. You know, I always try to do that kind of method. And then, uh-huh, uh-huh. like, a day had passed, and then it was like, hi, yes, just got your message. Are you available for a phone call in half an hour? And it's like, you're sending me that at 6 o'clock in the morning, and you want to know why at 6 o'clock in the morning? Well, you're also on um, – she's also on uh, West Coast. Why I wouldn't be available at 6.30 in the morning, a notification a half an hour ago. Like, why would I be on that schedule if you were on – the schedule of answering emails three days later. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, why? Yeah, I totally know what you mean. I think, I think, really, I think what we've set as a, you know, as as part of this whole fucking pandemic thing, and and working from home, and Zoom calls, and emails more than ever. It's like we immediately think that everything has to be immediate. And right. no, sis, like life does go on in a way. And it's like, fuck, at the, the community. I don't know. I'm over it. I want Omicron to be done. But mm. after Omicron, there's going to be something else. It's going to be the shum of the girls. Well, I think everybody COVID. was ill-mannered before Omicron. <laughs> I think people are fucking ill-mannered. That's what I think. Yeah, and it's really, and, and the pandemic has really just kind of shown itself as a, as a, as a magnifying glass for 
um, it, idio, idio, idiots. Yeah. Idiosyncratics. Yeah. 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 They yeah, do. Yeah. What else? I'm, I was what in else? Palm Springs this weekend. And uh, yeah. did a light, did a light, uh, a light. Event. Did you go clothing? Did you go to the clothing optional? Did you? Uh, uh, no, I did not. I actually did stayed you go, very near there. Uh, one, one. Did you get a pair? Did you get a pair of like you know like some like uh, pool uh, shorts from um, uh, Gay Mart? What's that brand called? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's the other one called out there? Trina Turk. Did you go to Trina Turk? No, and get you know, a... Ethel loves Trina Turk. Ethel loves going there. <laughs> um no, I did a, a I did a brunch. Uh it was like a pop up brunch celebrating Angina's fortieth birthday and there was quite a few of us. Oh there. my gosh. And Happy was... birthday, Angina. Yeah. And it was real fun. Oh my gosh, was that fun? Yeah, we had a great time. We had a great time. It was at uh uh one eleven in Cathedral City and um it's a it's a newer uh, it's you know been rebranded a bit but it's it's always been some sort of like an event kind of place but it's a cool bar and I I'd, I'd worked there once before Vanity Halston has a show there um and on China oh. was doing a pop up brunch and it was like two seatings it was really great you know Palm Springs for a long time has um once a couple of us left two cans and we moved over to Moxie and then tried to make something happen there and you know. Uh, there was a certain vibe to the Toucan's days. And I call them the Toucan's mm-hmm. days because it was kind of like the dog days. You know, it was like... I get it. It yeah. was a time totally and it was it. a place. I, and I've said to people before, I don't um, I don't believe that, I, you know, I oh, it, there was no drag in Palm Springs unless we were in Palm Springs. That's not the case. But a lot of us uh, experienced this sort of like renaissance of like turning sh- like weekly shows happening in the early 2000s. So... There was a lot of people that watched us and supported us during that time that, um, you know, uh, we don't get to see as much because we don't have weekly gigs there. We were there every single Sunday. And then I had mm-hmm. a Wednesday, mm-hmm. that, this, that, and the other. So Angina having this at 111 um, was really fun because a lot of the people that used to work consistently at Two Cans together um, sort of. A reunion. It was a reunion. Of, of sorts, yes. Of I, sorts. I, I love that in Palm Springs that, that people have kind of, you know, not veered away, but there there's a lot of there's a lot more exploration to be had in this area because this is where a lot of gay queer people, mm-hmm. people gay queer people of a certain age, um, you know, uh live and go out. And it's not just limited to just the two cans experience, which I still love. I love Tommy Rose, I love that, but it's now it, it's expanded. Mm-hmm. Remember when we used to go way back Back in the early 2000s to heaven. Mm-hmm. I do. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I do. So the, and that was like the only other thing other than toucans. But it's nice to see other things happening. Uh, even in the midst of all the of the of the shit that the planet is going through with with uh Omicron and blah 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 blah. Things are still happening. And I like I like seeing these areas explore new ideas and and spaces for people to perform and to um, hang out at and to be together. I've never been to 111. Sounds fun. Well, you know, the thing is, but then it's also there's like a protective uh, sort of uh, feeling that that seems um, exclusive, or you know, the terms exclusive and inclusive can can come to mind with for myself included, where you see something and you're like, oh, I don't know. Are you part of this? Are you part of this this idea of of doing drag? Are you part of this idea of the queer community or is it just being opened up to whoever? And it's like, okay, come in here and shit all over everything. And then everything's watered down. And then, ah, that used to be fun. Now it's all fucked. Like, do, oh, right, right, right. do you know what I mean? Like I, I, I see that happen. Like what we've talked about, like with festivals that come to town and everyone's like, mm-hmm. Ooh, what's mm-hmm. Palm Springs. Ooh, sick. Ooh. Uh, cacti oh i want to go in there and get a pink flamingo cacti. pink flamingo this is funny and then they like laugh it off and shit all over it and then they leave and they're like see you next year bitches and it's like well people live there all year round and people it's a safe yeah. haven for many people who have created that as a home and um it's just weird to share that with people who are like bitch we're going to palm springs and we're going to do it up it's like are you are you going to come do it up or are you going to come crap all over it? You know who I love in Palm Springs is the old gays. You know about those guys? The four guys. They're on TikTok. They're, you can follow them on Instagram as well. They're called the old gays. And oh, I four love guys. them. 
They're I cute. Love them. I love They're the old fierce. gays. They're so fierce. They're so fun. They're so on top of it. Mm-hmm. And and you know, and I and I and and as people of a certain age group, for them, it's like it's really nice to see them be a part of what technology can offer as far as vis- visibility mm-hmm. and um and it's just nice to see a, a um, old gays thriving. They're fierce. And, and they're funny. They're fierce. They're funny. They're cute. And they're really connected to everything. And I appreciate them. Yeah. Speaking of, a huge, huge, huge congratulations to MJ Rodriguez, who is the first trans person to ever win a Golden Globe. And I think this is a yes. remarkable, remarkable moment in queer history or in history in general. Because, you know, honestly, Delta, I think about the times when we was growing up and we were hanging out at Peanuts, and really the only option for trans women at the time was to really only do sex work. Right, right. And and if you and if you fit and if you somehow found the pocket or niche of of uh, uh, and you got to participate as a person who is queer on that level mm-hmm. of transness was not an option and it was really a, an exceptional thing and now here we are in 2022 and and mj rodriguez has won a golden globe and major congratulations to her yeah huge huge deal huge uh you know i i love uh her in this show very 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 much she's probably my favorite uh my favorite character in the show, I feel like the most realized character, and um, the idea of winning this in this category, especially up against these names. Anybody who wins, obviously, in a category, in a, in a, uh, a sh- um, an awards program like this, you know, you're going to be up against stiff competition. And this particular category, you know, big names, big names, and mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. this is just so exciting. You're right. I can remember, you know, at the time... When we were coming up, like I remember when like Jasmine had like uh, had a song yes. come out, and it was like, wow, how do you do that? Like, how is like that? That was the the visibility was something you know. Sure, we knew about RuPaul and and some of the other dolls that that were having albums out, but in it, close to us, close knit to us, people that we knew, uh, yeah. that wasn't really happening. You weren't really seeing a lot of that. I mean, I can go back to remembering when I was a kid. Do you remember? Did we talk about this before the close time commercial? No Do you remember the close time commercial? Hold on. No, it's coming. It's all coming back. It's all coming back. We, we, Television. We had to. Listen. <laughs> well, I'll find it. I'll I love find close it. Close time. We should do that as a <laughs> close we time. We should do that as a, a see something. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so to see this kind of visibility for people to realize how normal this is. Mm-hmm, this person mm-hmm, was recognized mm-hmm. for being an actress because they are in fact an actress in a category where we award actresses who do amazing. Yeah. And this is so it's monumental, but God, did we have to wait till 2022 to see it? You know? Yeah. I, I think uh, anytime I see uh trans women and men having their visibility and having their moment, it's really wonderful to see because, you know, we do, we do come from that time. Um, very very proud and i and i think about um you know the my nurse who came and gave me my uh shots my uh what are they called vaccinations mm-hmm. you know she she she's trans and i'm just thinking about like jobs regular jobs seeing somebody in the winning a golden globe seeing visibility seeing trans people living normal lives and doing things without having the uh not that not that sex work is a bad thing because we all need no, sex workers work is work. but i you see know, what you're saying work made to feel you know? like you only have the choice to do one thing right and it's just so so wonderful mm-hmm. to see uh to see this it's it's fantastic you, also you know what else bob is wonderful saget. bob saget died you no. know what else is wonderful when we go take a break <laughs> all right let's take a break <laughs> Let's do this. And we're back. Bob Saget died, Derta. He did die. Um, you know, this is a time. Um, I mean, I feel like at this point, he's, you know, that's, that's a very young death, really. When we see people living to yeah. be, you know, close to 100 years old. Or, or maybe I'm just comparing everybody to Betty White. I don't know. Um, and, and Sidney Poitier. Yes. And, uh, yeah. But, you know, 
uh, whatever. Uh, you know, any, any. Uh, we don't know what conditions people have or what, 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 when, why their time happens when it happens. But certainly, uh, everybody has different connections to different people who, who passed, and a lot of people have a connection to Bob Saget from uh, specifically Full House. But mm-hmm. you know, I, I, um, it's sad to to get to sort of this age where we where we see this kind of stuff happen. Things from when we were much young, people who were. <laughs> so big when we were much younger yeah i feel like it's happening more and more and i think that's just kind of normal as we you know start grazing and tickling our 50s oh tickling uh, them see... tickling tickling <laughs> your Tickle anal. My 50s. <laughs> tickling your anus the anals the yeah, anals wait, anal. wait wait the anals of the inbox um mm-hmm. uh these are this is the portion of the podcast where we read letters from people um you can always send us an email at delta and Raj at gmail.com. We want your questions, comments, queries. And if you have pictures of us from back in the day, you can obviously send those as well. Um, the first one is from Daria. Do you want to read that one? Mm-hmm. It says, from Daria. Hi, Delta and Raja. I'm re-listening to last year's episodes of Very That in your Christmas episode, Candy Cane Fetish. Delta mentions that there are parts of Texas she really loves. Recently, my husband and I, who are Europe slash San Diego transplants and have lived in Japan, in Tokyo specifically, for the last year, have been relocated to San Antonio due to this job, to his job. I am having a lot, capitals, lot of trouble adjusting and cannot find anything here that I love. It seems that San Antonio has no redeeming qualities, no shade. Is there any advice you can give? me to help change my outlook while we're living here we have to be here for one to two years and i don't want to be miserable the whole time as i write to you now it is december 21st and 80 degrees outside and all i all i want to do is cry hmm okay thank you for any advice or even just taking the time to read this i live for you both and i'm missing the socal drag scene terribly Hugs and kisses to you both. You are icons. And that comes from Daria, mm. who has been all over the world. Uh, Being Europe, around the world and I, 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 Not my, 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 my baby. baby. Well, listen. Japan, Tokyo. From and Paris to Berlin and every disco I get in. Um, look, you know, I know you say that as you're writing this, it's December 21st. It's you're it's 80 degrees outside. You're in Texas. You're missing the Southern California drag scene. The drag scene and the temperature uh, certainly, um, I think, might be very similar, different. But listen, in Southern California, it's not uncommon for us to be at 80 degrees on December 21st. So <laughs> no, it's not at all. I was like, wait, <laughs> so is that a bad that, thing? But that I, but I see normal? what you're saying. I think maybe the idea yeah. of being like in the South, and you know, maybe there's like a. I, I certainly romanticize the South a bit and think like, oh, it is just you know more more whimsical and more romantic and beautiful at Christmas and this and that and the other. And you're not finding that. Um, I personally, my experiences in in uh, Texas, uh, specifically in San Antonio, have always been positive. Um, if you're looking for s- specifically something to do, um, and you're looking mm-hmm. for like queer nightlife, I would suggest the Pegasus for sure. They have a great open talent night as well as regular drag shows. And then I would mm-hmm. also suggest mm-hmm. um, Paramore, which has a huge brunch. Uh, my friend Christy Waters is the entertainment director at Paramore. They have a huge brunch. They have a lot of burlesque events. Um, so there's stuff to do on that end. Um, mm-hmm. I, I know perhaps the uh, the pandemic has sort of muddled things, specifically in areas like Texas or Florida or places where maybe that is part of what's uh, affecting you. And, w- and with that said, I think you still have to stick to your guns and do what it is to this, to keep yourself and your partner safe. Like you said, it's only maybe a maximum of two years. Um Mm-hmm. I think you will find things if you if you go out and explore a little bit or maybe just get online. Raj has talked about that before for people who are new to an area, say that we're interested in drag specifically. And, and I know that's not what you're asking about. But like she said, you know, re- you just kind of reach out and throw it out there on, online and people will respond to you, whether it's a craft or, or a shopping experience you want or um, eating, you know, mm-hmm. food, whatever it is. Um, I think that's always a good good way to go about it. I think as my uh for my experience of being in San Antonio in particular I I would say that that is not the worst of places to be in 
honestly. I can uh I I I treat everywhere I go including the times when I travel and I find the best of it. For instance, my um my gravitational pull goes towards vintage clothing. Mm-hmm. So whenever I go into a certain town that I've never been into, I will simply Google it because the technology is there and you find out. You find the things that you're interested in. And it may not be as uh, lush or as plenty as some of the cities that you may have been, uh, that you have lived in, for instance, Tokyo, for instance, LA. But San Antonio does have its wonderful things. And you may just have to slow down a bit and enjoy what the, the town has to offer. But you're not limited to just that. You still have. You know all the reach of anything that you can find on Instagram and the and the world at your fingertips through technology. So, uh, for instance, you and I love to look at homes in mm-hmm. other states. You know, you can buy yourself a giant six bedroom haunted house in Ohio for a hundred thousand dollars. Right, and those thoughts constantly cross my mind. Like, I want to, ha- I want a big old giant crazy house. It may not be in the center of my universe that I normally work in, like L.A. But goddamn, does that sound good for to be in a giant mm-hmm. house? Because I love to be at home. I love to be at home. I love to decorate a home, and um, and so I think about those things. I think about relocating constantly, and I think about all the perhaps sacrifices that I have to make in order to enjoy where I'm at at that moment. Mm-hmm. I don't think that you have to sit there and twiddle your thumbs and feel miserable for two years in San Antonio uh, just because you've just moved there for the first time. I think there are things you can find in in the in your reach um you know and you'll just have to you'll just have to adjust to it and it really is a matter of just finding out what you know makes you happy even without those luxuries or or ease you know what it is daria it's like also too like as you're writing the the river walk is fantastic yeah you can get some steps in as you're writing this letter it's the holidays you're in a new space. Mm-hmm. There's a pandemic mm-hmm. going on. There's a lot of weight on your shoulders. Really, there is, especially when you're looking for the closest things to those creature comforts that you had everywhere else. And as Rasha said, mm-hmm. you may not find those exact things, but I promise you there are things in San Antonio that you're going to love. And it's just, mm-hmm. it might take a little bit longer to go, oh, I get it. This is how I fit here. And 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 write that chapter, like write that chapter, that two years or whatever it's going to be. And maybe... You find something new in yourself that you identify with in that space. So, yeah, hang in there. You might find something. Find something. something. Okay, look, we have a letter from (laughs) the dude in the shower. Mm. Delta and Raja, it's a pleasure to bring bring you into the shower with me every week. As I scrub my body with Old Spice Swagger body wash, your voices fill the air. (laughs) Your banter is the perfect balance of intelligence, nostalgia, and straight-up stupidity. (laughs) <laughs> you both come across as extremely likable people and bring a smile to my face. Now to my bullshit. I have an unfortunate pattern of falling for straight men. Let me first state, I'm mm. not ever looking to be attracted to these men. It just happens. I'm not one of these, oh, I'm trying to turn them gay type of people. I respect boundaries and I'll tell you... Um, uh, and if you tell me that you're straight, I will take it for face value. Anyway, my most recent case was a man who came, who was getting emotionally intimate with me, uh, sending me shirtless photos, talking about the size of his dick, staring at me in the eyes, giving me that look. After months of direct flirting, mixed signals, and other bullshit, I got drunk and finally called his ass out in person. He acted shocked and said he didn't know he was giving me mixed signals, blah, 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 blah. For reference, Ooh. I've had a majority of heterosexual men friends my entire life and they would never act like this towards another man because they are in fact straight i'm i fucking delusional when men be acting gay they be acting gay i don't understand why straight men do this and why i seem to be the magnet for these types of people have you divas ever gone through something like this before any thoughts of it go off uh to compa the dude in the shower okay (laughs) <laughs> what do you think go ahead well okay i think that uh you know i'm the type i i am there's a part of me that still has like a little bit i like a veil over my eyes mm-hmm. you know i i don't like to call anybody out like yeah i saw you looking at me bitch if you was looking at me you're gonna reach out and touch it mm-hmm. you know i don't have to call out i don't have to say hey baby you know and and and, and dude in the shower did say that that he was drunk mm-hmm but you know, sometimes the things that we that we think are happening are actually only in our heads. <laughs> okay, I do I do understand the attraction to straight men because that is somehow anything that's sort of forbidden or 
or, you know, or yeah, anything that's sort of forbidden is sort of attractive to us, right? And so we kind of make up, maybe we make things up in our head where we're like, oh, that guy's so into me and mm. he wants to fucking stick it in my gay ass. And uh, <laughs> maybe that's not the case, but uh, but I'm also not that person to call it out. I'm always like, in my experience, any man who identifies as straight who has ever reached out and touched this baby has never been because I I went out and jumped on it. Oh, okay. They wanted it. I they wanted it because they they smelled the perfume, honey. They were like, oh. "Oh, bitch." Yeah, in my in my young experience, especially my 20s when I was a lot lot more androgynous, straight dudes straight dudes in Huntington Beach, tattoo artists and shit were like, "You know, maybe maybe I'll let Sutan suck my dick. He's not really a guy." I mean, look mm-hmm. at him. You know, and so, and it was, it was never like, it was never anywhere where I had to force myself on anybody or be like, yeah, you want this. Mm -hmm. They wanted it and they, and they, they would reach out and touch it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not, I'm not one of those people who really re who does that. I don't go out and get it. I don't like to call anybody out. Like if, you know, it could be a man or a woman, but when they're looking at me, like they want to fuck me, I'm not going to call it out. You, you have to, you have to be the first one to make the first move and say, Hey, you know what, Raja? Come here, yo. Come here. Put, you know what, dude, in the put shower. Put on this. As, she's right. Uh, but here's the thing. Wh- whether this person's gay or not, or you're, you know, that's going to come out later. Even if this is, a, or I mean, even if this is a gay guy or a straight guy, regardless, they're both, <laughs> both gay guys and straight guys are going to do this to other guys that are going to pay attention to them. And they're going to mm-hmm. do this because it, there are people who gleam some sort of pride off of that going look at these people that want me and that's a huge red flag it's a major red flag because regardless Mm. of their orientation or if they want to really do want to fuck you or want to fuck other uh quote unquote men um if someone's toying with you this way and and if and if they are in fact toying with you this way they know exactly what they're doing they know exactly what they're Mm -hmm. doing and they know exactly how it makes you feel um and Mm -hmm. red flag let's uh (laughs) But Raj is right. They're, if if they want it, they're going to get it. I, I do. I love the idea of flirtation, and I don't care what sexuality you are. Mm-hmm. I can flirt with anyone. Oh, you can. I, you know, I can, and oh. I love it. It's 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 really all I got left is flirtation. Oh. So you know what? Oh. Flirt away, but every, uh, just a fart away doesn't mean that it. A fart away. Did you say fart away? Fartation. <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> And we're back. We and we're back. back. We're back. What do you? Uh, um, when we when we first got on the call, you were like uh, saying like, "Oh my gosh, I feel like there's a vibe happening." Like, and we, and we both were kind of like, "Man, um, did you have shit that you were supposed to do today?" I have so much shit I'm supposed to do today, and a lot of them involve like electronics and technology, and I just cannot, and I just don't. Oh really? <laughs> oh, you're not into it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. There's so much I have to do today. Um, also, uh, just to go back, Bob Saget was 65 years old. Bless. So young. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Wait, um, did you just want okay. everyone to know how old he was? Or do you miss him? Or like, I just think 65 is so young. I'm telling That's you, like it not... is way too young. That's so sad. We're not far from 65. Well, I'm not far no, from 65. I'm right behind you. Now. My birthday's in like two weeks. I'm. We're, I'm we're, we are like <gasps> the same age. That's right, Aquarius. It's Aquarius season. Okay, I need you to um, tell me how do you feel about the metaverse, whatever the fuck that mm. is. Tell me about Bitcoin and tell me about NFTs. Okay, what, are, what do all those things mean I, to you? All of them uh, hold a lot of possibilities and mm-hmm. a lot of probabilities, but I'm extremely mm-hmm. ignorant to every one of those things. Uh, I don't think mm-hmm. I'm a stupid person, but I am an ignorant person, and I don't know enough about them. I haven't asked enough questions. I haven't read enough about them, and I think that I need to get on it because it's all re- the wheels are already in motion. They've been in motion for a while. I can tell you that um, the fu- the f- the fuck is an NFT? I well, don't get I it. Can, I'm barely understanding d- that that like bumper sticker people have on their car that says uh, like "Not of this world." 
N-O-T, okay. like whatever. And so when people say NFT, I'm like, oh, not of is this not of this world abbreviated on top of that? Or uh, it is, it is not is of this? any world. I don't know. It and and we're gonna we're gonna bite all of our tongues for you know we're gonna hit ourselves for saying this later because eventually. Oh yeah. And NFTs is what's gonna be you know sustaining our livelihoods eventually. But as far as I understand, an NFT is a piece of artwork that is. Uh, exclusively made for a singular person slash entity, and then somehow people can purchase these visuals. Is that right? Am can I, I just, correct? Can I just tell you that I'm still not understanding the idea of 3D printing? So, oh, I love th- uh, 3D. Th- 3D. I don't printing understand is, how is you can be like, oh, well, just uh, would you like a, a brand new car? Let me just kick it out of this epsom printer here like <laughs> what i don't get it like what do you mean well if well if an nft is a digital image that people can uh you know can acquire and enjoy but you have to pay a price so basically everything that we've ever done by putting a filter over ourselves which is a digital mm-hmm. art piece essentially is an nft but we're not making money on it is that right I don't know. So okay, so what this sounds like to me is like basically How? this is like a like a piece of free photo editing. Is that Listen, mm. I'll tell you why I think this. Cuz I know someone, I worked with someone just recently who explained to me that they were going to buy a dress. They saw this dress they wanted. And they were like, "Fuck, I wanted this dress and it was a steal and I knew this is the time to buy it." And I'm going to, everyone is going to get so excited when they see me in this dress cuz it is beat and they're not and I'm going to tell my paid full price. They're not even going to know. And they went to check out in the purchase, and the purchase said, "Don't." They, it was one more reminder, and the reminder said, "This is a digital copy of the dress." Ew! And they said, "What does that mean?" And what it meant was, you're buying this sort of GIF, I guess, or like JPEG, or I don't know what the terms are, for you to JPEG? lay over pictures of yourself, <laughs> so people think that you were wearing the dress. At, no, this is like I don't hundreds like of that. dollars. What? That's come caca. I don't like that. So the idea is I'm not ready. You don't even have to go somewhere. You just buy the image and and take a picture of yourself sitting in a certain way, manipulate this dress on there and you can convince people that you went somewhere and you were wearing that dress. So then that takes away the actual vir- the literal experience becomes virtual. Is that Girl like every uh, every day more and more the world is becoming fucking Wally. Yeah. You seen Wally? Yeah. Yeah. People just, we're all just floating around on our little hover things and just being on video screens and slurping, um, you know, uh, smoothies and milkshakes to, to as uh, sustenance. Well, and, people, but people are doing it all the time. But, I, I, and I can tell you, somebody DM'd me one time, like, I would say this time last year, and they were like, oh, listen, I want to talk to you about you creating a virtual wig. And this virtual wig is going to be a piece of commerce. NFT. And blah, and they did. I couldn't understand it, and I didn't. And they were like, "Yeah, people will just buy the wig." And then I'm like, "But what will they do with it?" He's like, "Well, they'll wear it." And I'm like, "But how will they wear it if they if there's no physical?" Well, you'll have already created it. So now I'm understanding. I think that mm-hmm. it was going to be a virtual wig that they could put on themselves in a picture. Mm-hmm. I okay. So the in conclusion, I would say, how about you conjure up fifty grand, and then I conjure up another fifty grand to get like an eight bedroom house somewhere in the middle of nowhere, perfect. and then yeah, let's just go there and like just be the Beals, perfect, you know, and then we'll we we we'll just you know just just tr- you know trap ourselves in there and hide ourselves away from the world, mm-hmm. and we'll just live in our beautiful haunted hundred thousand dollar house in the middle of house. <laughs> Aww. Bob, oh, Bob Saget. Saget. You know, Bob Saget was actually a very, like, you know, he, from what I understand and from a little bit of what I've seen, um, like really raunchy and like. I love, yeah, I've seen mm-hmm. Bob Saget's comedy. He is really not the full house dad. Right. He is more, he's more like full house daddy. Full loads. <laughs> Zaddy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, full loads. Full loads. Fuck. Fuck. Um, do you yeah, did you hear the Blackberry is done? There's no more service for the Blackberry. You know, I, I didn't I even know that was that, done that was still a, a long thing. time ago, is what I thought. <laughs> I, don't know. I feel like Blackberry's very the person who still carries like the leather attache, like, let me get in my day planner. Like the day, remember Day Runner? Like it's very that. And I carry <laughs> I, I do carry a planner, but come on. 
I always think of Blackberry <laughs> from like um uh what was it? Is it Snapshot RuPaul? Hand me my Blackberry. I got a text message my agency. No, not the escort agency, honey. The modeling agency. I got to make these coins, girl. Oh, yes, I look good. I feel good. Well, as an as an Asian, the Blackberry was was uh, very, you know, it was very cohesive to an Asian's life because just in case your Blackberry got fucked up, you can always put it in a bag of rice. And guess what? I'm Asian. I always have a bag of rice. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Is that a yeah. thing for, Okay. Did you know that you could you you can put your BlackBerry in rice? <laughs> but why can't you can't you do that with any phone? Why just a BlackBerry? I wanna I wanna know. I've never done it with an iPhone. Has anyone ever put an iPhone in rice? I think they do it all the time. <laughs> no, they don't. Can't you just throw away your iPhone and get another one? I'm gonna fucking stick my my iPhone oh. in some steamed rice and eat it. Mm, like put sushi. it in a port. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, when you charge your phone, do you have one of those, like, um, some people have, like, a charging pad. They're like, I just put everything on the pad. But I don't, I, no. that doesn't work. Girl, get out of here. I gotta no. have, I have a 10-foot cord. <laughs> I buy them in quantity. because I, I And when people are, don't have a cord, I'm like, I have a cord for you. You can keep that cord. I have a 10-foot cord. And then I also, they have to have the nub that's, like, the the power charging. Like, it goes faster. Do you know what I'm talking about? Extreme yeah, charge. Yeah, I want yeah. it like that. I want it fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I still am one of those people who needs it to plug into the wall. Mm-hmm. Muy importante. Yeah. I have to have it in the wall because, you know, me and Thomas Edison are the same age. Right. So. I think it's yeah. funny when those, those little stations are called docking stations. And I know that's like, I'm like, who is it? Do- Wait. Oh, you guys fuck. haven't account found a new name for that yet? Oh, fuck. Yeah, dock. dock me. Dock. Cock. Huh. Let's dock dick. Dock cock. Dick dock. You cock. Mm. I'm on dick cock. Dock cock. Mm. You know when you go to Provincetown, there's still a cruising spot underneath. Um, it's on one of the docks. Like un, uh, it's like under. It's like a, underneath the platform. It's called the Dick Dock. Oh. And back in the day, yeah, back in the day, that was the place where people would go cruising. But now it's. Uh, at the, I mean, I haven't been to Provincetown in a while. But the last time I was at the Dick Dock, uh, people were using their phones to uses a flashlight underneath which is like which defeats the purpose right it's really just meant it's really mean me you know it's it's really meant for cock sucking in the dark right but those are the people that are like oh my god i heard about provincetown i want to go there and like gentrify the whole thing and turn it into something oh else. my god the dick dock uh, and then, and then later in the year we'll go TikTok to TikTok and the dick dock <laughs> and we'll go to palm springs and ruin it for everybody in palm springs too it's very that. <laughs> TikTok, TikTok and the dick dock. I think I just started something. Don't stop dick dock. Yeah, we could do. How come? We, you know, we always talk about like, because you do so much music and I'm like, oh, we should do this song. We should do that song. But I should do my own shit because I'm not going to do any shit with you. Because um, <laughs> we're on different levels. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You remember when we had the Heather song? <laughs> <laughs> remember remember when we were the Heathers? Dick. <laughs> Hi Dick. Stupid. <laughs> remember we were like we're going on tour. We're going on tour. <laughs> Went to one place. <laughs> Poor Daniel Cole was the only person who bit. He was like, "All right, I'll bring you guys out here." <laughs> fucking lost his ass on it. Speaking of Kesha, did I ever tell you about the time when I was uh, in line? This was before I had like my Delta uh, Platinum Diamond status. Mm-hmm. And I was like in the normal people line. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Kesha showed up with her mom without her ID. And I was like, <laughs> and we were in line together. We were we were in line together, and I had previously met Kesha from another experience from uh-huh. whatever, and so we were a bit familiar with each other. And so I like I like reached out, and I was like, like literally, we were standing next to each other, but but on on the rope separated uh-huh. us. She was on one side, trying to convince a TSA guy who she was, and I happened to be like pretty much shoulder to shoulder on the other side of the rope. And I was like, hey, Kesha, I'm Sutan. Remember me? I used to do. It. And she was like, yeah. She's like, hey. Can you tell this guy who I am? And she literally pulled out a magazine, like a Mirabella or whatever magazine she was in. And she was like, look, this is me. And she like opened up the magazine to, sh- to prove that she was Kesha. 
And basically, I was like the fan or the friend who vouched for her. Yeah. And was like, yeah, that's Kesha. Yes, that happened. Not Mirabella. Dink, dunk, da, da, da. A Mirabella. Is there a Mirabella I still? <laughs> I don't know. Fuck. It was that long ago. <laughs> what, would, what, would, what magazine would somebody pull out to be like, if you had to be like, this is me, what, what magazine would you be in? Uh, Odyssey. Odyssey mag- Sneech of the Week. <laughs> yes. I would be in the Avon catalog. They're like, this is her modeling this tropical sunset lipstick. That would Look be- at me. I'm on the cover of Frontiers, a Christmas episode <laughs> issue. No. With Candace Kane. Christmas issue. <laughs> Let's take a break. I don't know what it is. What is that? Are you polishing your I, nails? Yes. I, there is something Maxwell's so gay. adorable about Maxwell, like fully, like fully I don't gorgeous so. beard, oh. gorgeous beard, and then the nails. Like I love the juxtaposition. I think, it, and I'm not ridiculing it, or I'm not. I think it's fucking cool. I love it too. I do. We love. We're we're back, and we're talking to to our producer Maxwell. Yeah, we are back, and he's. And he's a faggot. Yeah, and he's he, got he's uh, beautiful, beautiful man with beautiful beard, but very lithe and thin and healthy. And then he's painting his nails. And it's so it's, and healthy. It's pretty. It's just he's he's pretty and he's so sweet. Anyway, and he has to you put know, up you know what I'm speaking speaking of hot hot guys like wait hold on Maxwell are you they them or are you he him? Uh, he they. He they mm. he they he I mm. I thought you said fideo fideo I'm he fideo. fideo like if you just like let <laughs> it rumble off like oh fideo Maxwell doesn't know what fideo is yeah he does no he doesn't yeah he does Maxwell do you know what Maxwell do you know what fideo is you don't go off the screen Max- then make him go off the Get screen out of here, Maxwell. make him go dark Let's... like that <laughs> he has to know what that is. God. But quickly before we before we move on to see something, I just want to say that uh, when watching porn, I really appreciate seeing polished nails mm, okay. on dudes. Now you do. Uh, ha- have you watched porn recently? Uh, I've seen polished nails. Yeah, I think it's fine. I d- um, I-, I think it depends. I feel like if you have the darker your nail polish is, the more it's allowed to be chipped. Oh, absolutely. If you are doing something light or you're like, oh, this is like, you know, uh, a beautiful mauve color, which, uh, you know, not no. everyone wears mauve. Not everyone wears auburn. Those are two colors that I wear often that people are like, ew, that is so. Yeah. And, you know, that's my speed. If you are doing that, it can't be chipped. No, no, no. And I can give you an example because uh, when I go to the nail shop, because my toes, toenails are already discolored anyway. So sometimes the, have the nail. Barely. Okay. The one, the one that is left is discolored. <laughs> that, the one next to the pinky that like doesn't touch any of the other toes. It's all protected like this. <laughs> no, but the, the lady who always does my nails, Anna, she's always like, Oh, you want to put this nude color? And I'm like, no, because I know it's going to chip eventually. And there's nothing worse than a nude polish on a discolored toenail <laughs> when you can see the gr- when you can see the green the green gray underneath. <laughs> my mom, whenever I always I always take my mom to get her nails, her toes, and her nails done, and she, I'm always like, Mom, what do you think of this color? What do you think of that color? And she doesn't usually like anything too like beigey or like. And she, a lot of times she'll look at stuff and she'll go, that looks like a nicotine stain. I don't like that color. That looks like a nicotine stain. <laughs> anyway. I, you know, I, I, there's stains on my toenails and I know they're not nicotine because I do not smoke my Mm-mm. cigarettes with, the, with my toes. You used well, to I, though. I, I, you I used to. Used to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I do. Okay. I mean, just to prove to people that I can, you know, actually touch my feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay all right see something see something uh this is where we i see something this is where we take a trip i actually usually wait until uh 
until we get to this point to see the picture so that I'm like, I feel like it's authentically surprised. But sometimes I do peek at them and I peeked at this one and I was like, you know what? This is, this was from a while back, but not that long ago, actually. Um, yeah. This is a trip down memory lane where we revel in some of the good times from Drag Days past. And of course, these photos are always available on the See Something um uh, or the Mom Podcast's Instagram page under See Something. So give that page a follow mm-hmm. if you want to see something. This was sent in by Tommy, which we know several Tommies. And this could be uh, Tommy, who used to go to Rage all the time and maybe took this picture. This is uh, mm-hmm. me at Rage at Dreamgirls. Um, mm-hmm. A couple things about this. This was like the first, one of the first things that Davey ever made for me. Because he was, like, te- mm. teaching himself how to sew. So he didn't okay. really know anything. And so he created this pattern off of, I think, off of a bathing suit. And then had to extend it a little bit. And then had to create mm-hmm. the arms. And then he created these belts. He bought these chains downtown and started looping. I love. And then, love it. And the hat, I bought this hat at Halloween Club. And I had, oh, really? And so I had the hat. And then mm-hmm. that's where the idea of making this came from. And, um... Later, I realized Willem has this exact same hat. So I don't know if Willem bought his there oh. or it was a gift or somewhere else. But Willem was like, hey, I have that same hat. So if you're ever looking for a, a really cool hat like that, they make really decent ones and so do sell them at Halloween Club um, mm-hmm. in a couple of different colors. And they're super sturdy. They're not real collapsible. They're like legit. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is something I feel like I would I have this still. And mm-hmm. I would wear this again. I mean, it's, you know, I think if you like something and you can continue, you want to continue to wear it, you do have to alter it, I think, from time to time. So if I was to take this out again, I would probably have to double check that the belts or those chains aren't all collapsing because, you know, they're done with jump rings and they could break. Um, but this, I would take this in a little bit and I would still wear it, you know? Yeah. I think it's sexy. I think it gives me like um, poker face, Lady Gaga. Um, uh, it's it seems like a very current picture. Just looking at it, it does. Seem I don't know. I, yeah, I like this. I like this picture a lot. I think you look exceptionally beautiful. I low. I always love a cowl hood. Mm-hmm. You know, where you know, Dr- a la Grace Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel this. I feel this. Well, you I know what this, this was. Outfit. Oddly enough, as you say, Grace Jones. This was. I, I remember performing "Pull Up to the Bumper" in this. See what I'm saying? That's what I performed. See in something? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. And this boot, I you can't even tell. It just looks like a regular boot. But um, Chad bought those boots, and mm-hmm. was like, they were when he bought them, he didn't realize that he was buying what they call the plus calf. So it was supposed to be a little bit wider, and mm. they were just they were just too wide for him in the leg. And I think he's, mm-hmm. he spent a ton of money because they're like really good leather boots. In fact, I still have them. And I always want to get that same boot replicated because it fits. It's fitted enough without being baggy. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, I always mm-hmm. want to take that somewhere and have them like replicated. And I really want nude thigh high boots. You know? Oh, that sounds sexy. That's what I really need. Yeah. And it's gonna cost. Yeah. You know so what's? What? You know? You know what's really Modessa for me? Is that I, uh, back in the day, I would buy a boot, like a thigh-high boot, but because my foot's so big, mm-hmm. you know, a size 13 slash 14, mm-hmm. uh, that the boot would be created with a leg to modify the size of the foot. Sure, so assuming right. that the foot is large, the leg might be large as well. And so I always had to wear like, you know, the I always had to somehow take the boot in or scrunch it or find a way because the leg was always too wide for my skinny leg on large foot no it's true but these days these days oh shut up baby i don't even know there's no they fit they fit now you I'm get everything thick. made to measure though which i love that you do that i do but the but when i do buy from only maker or uh whatever mm-hmm. you know fsj shoes sometimes the leg is always a, a little bit thicker and what would used to be a too too wide leg for me now fits because I'm thick with two C's. It burly fits. Like Chanel. It burly. Burly. <laughs> it burly. It burly fits me. Um. Yeah. So you know, listen. I you talked about before repurposing things or or if you like something, wear it again. I mean, this is just something I wouldn't mm-hmm. wear this. Clearly, would not wear something like this to go to a um uh the premiere of Drag Race or something like that. Just because that's not. 
I don't, I feel like this is something I would wear at a show, but it, it's not necessarily mm-hmm. something I would wear out to sit and talk to people just because I feel like in that case, in a conversational element, it would start to wear me and I wouldn't wear it. Mm-hmm. But if you're standing on stage and yeah, it absorbs up the space and it gives people something to look at and, you know. Well, do you wear chaps? Because, you know, that's how, what the girls wear now when I they wear the bodysuit, which is the standard. You No, you have to. You have to keep up with the time, sis. Would, now, if I wore that, would I wear it with a pastel Marcel Wave wig teased out or what would I wear with that? No, it would be a symmetrical, very gelled, uh, rhinestoned, you mm, know. With the chaps. With the chaps, because that's what the girls wear now. Do you and, think, and, you know, I, uh, I've, I've, I've follow a lot of people and I really do take into consideration the idea of, um, you know, I, I, I like to get rid of the, the, the verbiage in the brain for all people that you should wear things that flatter you because flatter, what's flattering in your mind is, should be what makes you feel good. It makes you feel powerful. But when other mm-hmm. people project on you, that's not flattering on you. It means it's not comfortable to them because they're not used to seeing someone of that proportion or size in something like that. And so mm. that com- that needs to be taken out of the conversation. Oh, that's not flattering on you. However, I like to work with what I think the lines are. Like, this is pushing it for me in a body. This is very pushing it. You know, I don't wear stuff like that all the time. I, I would mm-hmm. and I'm fine with it, but I don't normally wear that because that's just not how I like to showcase. I like to showcase in a mm-hmm. different manner, but we all have showcase. Yeah. We all have like in our mind what, what, what we consider to be beautiful. I like the idea of love boat in, from 1980 to 1985. Uh, the the mm-hmm. ladies on there, like to me, that was so sexy to have like the hair that moves and like dresses that lay across their body and like, tan shoes with tan legs i think that's sexy and so um for me that's what i would like to wear for others that's not what they would like to wear so they think oh that's a little bit a you look a little bit aged in that you should wear something younger but then that's pushing another agenda i feel like on people and saying why are you trying to look older like i feel like i'll do drag for a long time because i've always done music that i enjoyed but it's always been music that's way older than me and normally not on the charts Mm-hmm. With that said, so so what? Well, what they're saying is, oh, that's not f- uh, flattering on you. What they're saying is that's fattering on you. Sure, yeah, yeah, they are. So the idea of chaps, for instance, like I wouldn't. There's probably it's like I actually I have worn chaps when Christina Aguilera was doing the song "Dirty." I remember I had like a little parody <laughs> outfit. But for I need me, that see something. But for me, I'll find it. But for me, it was a parody because I didn't feel like it was a great showcase of me. I thought it was me doing something that was sort of silly and light. And, uh, um, right. Uh, but for some people they wear it because they think, well, that's what everybody's wearing. So I have to wear it. And they don't take into consideration. Does it, is it really what you want to wear? Like, do you really feel great in it? Or do you feel now uncomfortable, but you feel like you're fitting in and no one's going to say anything to you because you're wearing what all the girls are wearing. But then at the same time, everyone's talking shit about you because you're not wearing it confidently because you don't feel good. See what I'm saying? Gosh. Yeah. Overthinking, I do. overthinking on Tuesdays. Here we go. Here we go. It's Aquarius season. I'm telling you, wear what you want, but listen, look in the mirror. I'm just saying that. <laughs> wear what the fuck you want, but look in the mirror and go, that's exactly what I wanted to look like. Yeah. You and, heard. And, and and say and say that confidently. Yes. Yeah, and take one. Some people listen. Raja might put one thing on before she leaves the, and I always take one thing off. But <laughs> that's fine. That's how we do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, if you can't hide it, keep adding more shit. That's what I say. Tommy Rose did say that. He used to say, "If you can't hide it, decorate the shit out of it." And very often, that is yeah. so true. <laughs> yeah, I live. Well, hey, listen. you guys, if. Oh, yeah, go uh, but, say no. No, it says, de- it says Delta. Oh, I'm just, it says Delta go- says that part, but, you know. Oh, there's a script? I talked a lot. A I always talk a lot. You say my part, <laughs> I'll say your part. No, you say it. It was sick. All right. Hi. Thank you so much for listening to Very That with Delta and Raja. Our show comes out every Monday, and we want you to subscribe to make sure that you do not miss an episode. Yes. Just search for Very That with Delta and Raja on your favorite podcast app and hit the subscribe button. And remember to rate and review our show as well. You can send us a question at Delta and Raja at gmail.com. And follow us on Instagram at Sutan Amrul, that's me, and at Delta Work. 
Oh, God. And we will be back next week with another episode of Very That. Yeah. Dock me under the docks. Oh, doc TikTok. <laughs> Not Mirabella Magazine with Kesha. I don't think that's still it. Maybe it is still a magazine. I don't know. Was it was when I saw when it was when I saw Kesha. So that's how long ago it was. That that is a long time ago. Forever. To listen to Very That one day early and ad-free, join Forever Dog Plus at foreverdogpodcast.com slash plus. Very That is produced by Forever Dog and Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and Raja. Produced by Maxwell Esposito. Music, editing, and sound design by Will Pitts. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey.